Lord in prayer. But you can go ahead and look up First Chronicles chapter 16. And we'll be reading the text from there today. Father, I love you, Jesus. I praise you. Lord, for your goodness and your mercy and your love. Lord, for your long-suffering, Father. Lord, just for your word, Lord, and for all that you do. But most of all, Lord, I just thank you for being you. I love you, Father. I praise you. And Lord, I thank you for what I see that you're doing for them that truly are wanting to be real, them that are pressing on in, God. Lord, you're doing a work in each of us, Father, and I thank you for that. Oh, holy Jesus, holy Father. And Lord, I know that you will have your complete will done here in this area. And God, Lord, it's all in your hands, Lord. Lord, it is in your hand, God, and I know, Lord, that you are going to do that mighty word. And Lord, that you are going to express yourself in the way that you desire. And Lord, that many bands will be broke here in this area, God. I believe it with all my heart. Lord, I know that the evil, Lord, and this old religious spirit, God is going to be drawn back. Many are going to be broke and the shackles are going to fall. Lord, many are going to be broke from this yoke of religiousness, Father. Lord Jesus, I see you bringing up a church, God, that is going to truly love you with their heart, soul, and mind, Lord, that they're going to apply themselves to you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Father, and I praise you. Lord, bless not my vessel today to minister this word. Lord, let it go out and reach, Lord, and minister to the heart and the soul of the hearer, God, that they will hear and receive. And Lord, be blessed and built up and strengthened in thee, O oh God. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Lord, if there is any lost, Lord, that is hearing this message, Lord, I pray, God, Lord, that their spirit will be drawn unto you by the Father. And Lord, that they will hear that call and they will answer it, Lord. Lord, in your precious holy name, Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. First of all, I want to thank the Lord for helping me with the sickness in my body. I really do. I appreciate it. For helping me. Hallelujah. And I know it's all by His power. And, and I just love Him with all my heart. But I want to start reading. And what I'm going to minister on today is the beauty of holiness. Now, a lot of times when you speak holiness, a lot of people think you're talking about the outward adorning. But, yes, we do need to do that. But what I'm wanting to speak on is true beauty of holiness that's in the heart of mankind that God is wanting to place there in us, in His children. Hallelujah. And I'm going to start reading that verse 8. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength and seek his face continually. So he lets us know that we are, are to apply and walk a consecrated life to him to seek him daily. It's not something that you just get into and then get out of, but you just... Press toward Him every day. Renew your minds daily in Him. It's to remember His marvelous works that He had done. His wonders and the judgments of His mouth. O ye seed of Israel, His servant, ye children of Jacob, His chosen ones. Isn't that something? How the Lord refers to us as His chosen ones. You know, we didn't go seeking for Him, but He come looking for us. I'm so thankful that he chose me to be his child. My goodness, I don't want to ever take that for granted. Because I know that there are many that are being pulled and, and convicted by God. But many turn a deaf ear. and They don't want to hear. And they don't want to receive at that time. And I just pray that God will just keep working with those hearts. And keep pulling them and keep drawing them. But you know, sometimes he only just draws on some a few times before they go on and they uh, leave this earth and they leave unsaved. It breaks my heart. But God knows the heart of every man that He's dealing with. And He knows whether they're going to listen to Him or whether they're not. So, you know, God is long-suffering as long as He wants to be with each and every person. 
But we pray for his long suffering on every one of us. Hallelujah. And I thank you for his, uh, I thank him every day for his long suffering. And it goes on, it says, He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. See, that's one thing about God's covenant. It never runs out. Once God makes a covenant with his people, it is a perpetual covenant. It is everlasting. It's something that we can steadfast in. It's something that we can believe and trust in. And that's something that I am thankful to God, even when he had a covenant with Abraham. Hallelujah. He made himself known unto Abraham. What? Through a covenant with him. Well, God has made himself known to us through the covenant that he has made with his people. And that's the reason I have new covenant on this church. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ is that new covenant to us. Hallelujah. That we're not saved by works, we're saved by faith through grace. Hallelujah. Or grace through faith. Either way, either way it takes them hand in hand. But I tell you, I thank God for all that he does. It's that even of the covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac. And hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan the lot and the lot of your inheritance. See, we have an inheritance in God. Hallelujah. And I tell you, I want everything that he has prepared for me. We can read that in Psalms 100 of all the benefits. Hallelujah. That is entitled. It's an entitlement to us as we serve him and walk in his word. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah. But it goes on and it says, When you were but few, even a few, and strangers in it, and when they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. Isn't that something? How God will fight our battles. I said, God, I said, this war that is raging here, I said, God, you have fought every battle. And I said, God, you are the one that's going to have victory here. And I said, God, I thank you, Lord, for fighting this battle for us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because, Sister Pam, any time flesh thinks it can fight something, it better get out of the way because it's going to fail. <laughs> it's going to fail. So we've got to rely on God. Hallelujah. But listen to what he says. He's saying, Touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. God, I tell you what, he puts great value in his ministers. He puts great value in his people. Amen. The Bible tells me in the Old Testament that we are a peculiar treasure to him. Hallelujah. We are a peculiar people, a set apart people, a people that is separated from the world. We don't love the world or the things in the love. In the world. Hallelujah. It's not what our heart desire is. It's for those things in the world. Our desire is unto the Lord. And what he has for us. Amen. And that's where true beauty comes from. It comes from him. His spirit. Amen. And I tell you what. You can be around people at times. And, and, and you know what's going on there. Because my goodness. When someone has got that personal relationship in such a way. You can just see that. That beauty of God that's on them. It don't matter what their natural outside looks like. Hallelujah. I'm talking about whether their face is pretty, whether it ain't, whether they're fat, skinny, or whatever. That beauty that radiates from them from within is that beauty of holiness that God has put there. And that's what God wants to radiate out of us is the beauty of His holiness. Amen. And that's what I want to take place in my heart is His holiness to penetrate my heart. Hallelujah. And that beauty shine forth that it shines as a light. And that's what people see. It's just saying unto the Lord, all the earth show forth from day to day His salvation. Declare His glory among the heathen and His marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared among all gods. There is no God <laughs> like our God. Hallelujah. All these other gods, hallelujah, they ain't nothing. They are just man-made and they are just imagination of men's minds. But our God is real and alive. Hallelujah. And He lives down in us. He's alive in the earth. He's alive in heaven. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And I tell you, I love him and praise him. Amen. For all that he does. Amen. And it says right here, for all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Those idols didn't make nothing. They were made by man's hands. And you know, it, it but you know, there has to be a blindness on somebody's heart and mine to go and cut something down or fashion it from gold or silver and make some idol that they know that they made. Hallelujah. They can't talk to them, can't hear what they say, and can't even move for them. But yet, they will dedicate their life to these things. And I'm talking about a dedication you wouldn't believe. But it's because of the Satan of spirit, the spirit of Satan that gets down in them and causes them to worship that idol. But let us shield our members over to God. And let us worship Him in true spirit. In true truth. Hallelujah. But it goes on and it says, Glory and honor are in His presence. Strength and gladness are in His place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Bring an offering and come before Him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. See, God wants us to have a righteous spirit. He wants us to control our spirit. He wants us to govern what we allow to take place in our thought patterns, in our mind, hallelujah, in what we choose to do in life. He wants us to all be directed by the beauty of holiness, which comes only from Him. And I believe that this true beauty of holiness dwells in you. It will cause you to cover up that flesh. I'm sorry, but it will. So, and I'm not saying that God don't have time to work with the young babes. Hallelujah. And, but if they are under the right leadership, that leadership can carry them on in. They don't have to struggle through all that mess. Hallelujah. I know I heard someone say one time that we're living in a different era and a different time. Yes, we are. But sin is sin. Sin has always been sin. And perversion and corruptness has always been evil. And just because you didn't see it while you was out there, it was out there. Hallelujah. And God transformed their life and He will do it today if people will instill it in their heart. I heard of people down in sin in such a way. I mean, God has always saved strippers and, and prostitutes and drug addicts and alcoholics and gang members. He's always, hallelujah, moved for them in their lives and transformed their lives. And he do that same thing today. Yes, we see it on a bigger and greater measure because there's more people that's living in sin today. Amen. But sin is sin. It's always been sin. Amen. And the beauty of holiness has always been there. Hallelujah. And it's up to us whether we let it rule and reign in our heart. And I want to give my life unto God and I want that beauty of holiness living and dwelling in me. And I, I tell you, there, there is something about when God's Spirit is, is in you. Hallelujah. And, and, and it just causes you to want to praise and worship Him. And give your thoughts and your ponder upon Him. My goodness, I tell you, I got uh, so caught up in, in the ministry. And, and things and fighting things in my body. That I couldn't ponder on the Word like I was used to. And I couldn't pray like I was used to pray. And it would take a toll. I'm, I'm telling you, it, it took a toll. <laughs> I said, God, I said, Lord, you know that I have got to have your presence. I said, Lord, you know, Jesus, that I need you greater and greater. And I said, God, I said, Lord, I know this too will pass. And Lord, I am going to every waking moment that I have that I can think sensibly, Lord. I said, Father, I'm going to ponder in you. I said, Lord, I'm going to meditate in you day and night. And I said, Lord, that's where my perfect peace lies. And I said, Lord, I am going to walk it, Lord, in you. we got to walk this thing out, children of God. You can't just talk it. you got to walk it. Amen. And I tell you, I thank God for helping me tell you when you're so sick that you don't even know if you're you're living or dead <laughs> hallelujah and you're just my goodness your body is just so done in and it just is exhausted and and when I come back from Africa my goodness I, I didn't know if I had malaria I didn't know what if I brought back what I took and, 
And I said, God, I said, no, I, I know I had jet lag, and I said, God, I know I gotta have your move. But my goodness, there was days there that I, I barely knew I existed. <laughs> I mean, I was in bed and I was praying while I was to my uh, knowledge, and and I said, God, I just trust you, Lord. My my life is in your hand. And I said, but God, you gotta raise me up out of this. I said, Lord, I gotta have my time with you. And when I was feeling better and getting better, and Pastor Paul and them were praying for me over there, and uh, and I was so thankful for it. And I mean, it was a struggle just to get to church and come, and and uh, I tell you, just to be obedient to the Lord. And I said, but God, I said, this too will pass, and I'll be stronger for it, Lord, once I get through it. And I said, Lord, I know you're taking me through it. Father, I know you're taking me through. And when I got a little strength to me, and, and of course I would be studying and praying and, and working, trying to get things going in the ministry that I knew I had to get done. And, and any time that I wasn't doing that, I was right, right back in bed because that's about all I could do. <laughs> I said, Tim, you and the boys are just going to have to see to this house now because I said, I'm just not able. I said, but... I said, I know that I'm coming toward this. And uh, and God has just really been moving for me. And my goodness, it'll be, it's going on the third week that I've been back. and I'm getting stronger all the time and I'm thanking God for it. But the Lord has just been really speaking to me about the beauty of holiness. Now I want you to turn to Psalms 29. Hallelujah. And Lord, I said, that's what I want in my heart. I want true holy, holiness abiding there, Father. I want it to be in your beauty. And God is just like that. And I, it, I want to start reading at verse 1. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And I want to read to you what beauty means. It's the quality in a person or a thing. A beautiful person or a thing. So, it's easy for us to recognize natural beauty. Because we see it, we behold it, and we say, well, oh, how beautiful that is. Whether it's a person or it's a scenery that we see out there that's made by God's hands. It ain't nothing more beautiful than what He paints with His finger, I'm telling you. The beauty of God is just so wonderful to behold. But, um... Uh, and I, I said, Lord, I just want that beauty of holiness in my heart. When they see me, they don't see me. That they see you. Amen. And they see that holiness. And holiness means a quality or state of being holy or godly. That's what it means. Godly means to be godlike. But this is so good right here. It said, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. And when I read these scriptures here, uh, which I've read them many times, but I believe it was a, a, about the first of the year when I read these again that just stood out to me. And I remember that when I was got the Holy Ghost at 19 years old, and when I felt the Spirit of God coming in me and, and me speaking in tongues, before He entered me, I heard the rushing of, of, of many waters and, you know, on the farm there, we didn't live by any water. The, the river that was on the property was way down at the bottom, at the back back there. There wasn't no way that you could hear it from up there in the house. And I just heard, like, the voice of many waters. And I've always wondered what it meant. And when I read this, and, it, and the Lord took my mind back to it, I said, well, my goodness, Lord, you were just letting me hear that voice of many waters as you were filling my spirit body hallelujah with your holy ghost and i tell you what that love and peace that god put in my heart was nothing like it my goodness i'll never forget it that's the reason i tell people i said people come too late to tell me that there's not a holy ghost that god don't put in us and you know that yourself if you've been baptized with the holy ghost you know that god still gives the holy ghost today nobody can tell you different hallelujah and, and when you want